post-mortem. An examination of a dead body to determine the cause of death, cause of death, cause of death, cause of death, cause of death. In this generation, no game ever truly dies, unless the developers themselves pull the plugs on the servers. However, some titles do reach the point of no return, where they will never live up to the expectations the developers intended. Postmortem will now analyze EverQuest Landmark. The day was October 10th, 2014, and Minecraft officially became the best-selling PC game of all time, selling over 17 million copies. But why is this important? Well, leading up to that date, practically hundreds of developers attempted to recreate the Minecraft magic for themselves. Blocky-style Minecraft voxels suddenly took center stage, and it seemed the typical PC graphics rush slowed ever so slightly. One such developer during this time was SOE, now known as Daybreak Studios. Looking to capitalize on this new build-your-own-sandbox craze, they announced EverQuest Landmark. To the credit of the developers, they attempted to do more than just copy the Minecraft formula. Instead of highly pixelated boxy graphics, Landmark opted for higher quality voxel graphics and more realistic Pixar-like characters to replace the now iconic Minecraft guy. However, during a time where build-your-own-world sandboxes were a dime a dozen, the promise of just another Minecraft with higher graphics and higher production values was simply not enough. But the team dropped a bombshell to the community of builders and EverQuest fans. Daybreak announced that they would use community-created structures, dungeons, even towns as an environmental foundation for the upcoming EverQuest Next. The community instantly embraced Landmark with open arms. Open source MMO development. That was a term that was thrown around quite often as players felt the developers would be able to focus more on making EverQuest Next a rich and deep MMORPG while the community handled building the world. And as you guessed it, the hype was real. The Founders Pack sold for as high as $99 for a privilege of testing an alpha product and hopefully making their mark on what Mini Drip would be an MMORPG that they would spend the next several years of their life playing. In March 2014, the first signs of turmoil began to surface as they changed the name from EverQuest Landmark to simply Landmark. The main reason given at the time was the name was just confusing. However, it's unclear if the team knew way back in 2014 that EverQuest Next would struggle to see the light of day. And then on February 2nd, 2015, Sony announced the sale of SOE and all IPs, including EverQuest, to a private company. The studio then changed its name to Daybreak Studios and announced from this point that they would be operating independently. And with all company buyouts, massive layoffs were not too far behind. The layoffs even included Dave Georgeson, who led the EverQuest franchise for the last five years and became one of the more popular EverQuest figures. And many people at this time began to fear that EverQuest was now in danger. However, Daybreak assured fans that all their current games and future games would not be affected by these layoffs. For the following months, it was business as usual for Daybreak until June 2015, where the company announced it would shift development focus primarily to EverQuest Next and any features exclusive to Landmark would now be paused indefinitely. However, the fan reaction to this negative news about Landmark was actually met with excitement. Many people felt that this news solidified EverQuest Next as the next flagship title for Daybreak Studios. However, that excitement could only go so far as the next nine months were devoid of any information regarding EverQuest Next or Landmark. Many feared that the title was far too ambitious for the now smaller studio. And on March 2016, all of those fears were validated. Daybreak announced that EverQuest Next had been canceled, citing the very vague reason that it just wasn't fun. The team announced Landmark would still be launching in 2016, but would no longer be free to play. Shock hit not only the EverQuest fan base, but the entire MMO community at large. Was this the end of AAA MMOs? And then that shock turned into outrage. Many Landmark founders who had invested hundreds of hours over the years in creating what they thought would be the foundation of EverQuest Next felt cheated. And the majority opinion at the time was that many of these players would have never invested the amount of time into Landmark had it not been tied to EverQuest Next. Many people felt that they were the victim of a bait and switch. 
In the middle of all this controversy, Landmark still launched on June 10th, 2016 to abysmal reviews. The mostly negative reviews not only focused on missing gameplay features and stale combat, but the business model itself. When the game arrived on Steam, Founders Pack purchasers found that they could no longer access the game. What was assumed to be a bug turned out not to be. Daybreak wanted their Founders Pack purchasers, who had already shelled out upwards to $99, to pay an additional $9 to play the full launch version of Landmark. With a controversy like this, it didn't take too long for the Steam reviews to absolutely torpedo. And as it stands with close to 2,000 reviews, Landmark sits at a mostly negative rating with only 33 players online currently. Once again, a post-mortem analysis isn't to say that a title is dead or will never see updates, but a declaration that the title is no longer capable of living up to the expectations the developers once intended. My name is FG3000, and thank you for watching.